Not much is written about it, but it does exist nonetheless. It holds on to most of its old buildings, which firmly hold it in its historical past. This is in stark contrast to other areas in Ethiopia, which are currently under construction and developing at quite a speed. It's all city, you know, you get Italian buildings. Before, you know, we have been colonized by uh, Italy. Yeah. So the whites used to live here. It is like uh, the first uh, place that is uh, modernized. The piazza was named by the Italians during their brief rule of Ethiopians between 1936 and 1941. This place is... Um, Beautiful place, you know. The traditional Italian architecture has remained and it attracts tourists from across the world. I was as well drawn to it after reading a brief history about it in an Ethiopian airline magazine guide during my flight to Addis Ababa. Piazza is an Italian word depicting an open square in an European town. In Ethiopia, it refers to part of a city, a district in the capital Addis Ababa. As was in the magazine, I found that most parts have remained unchanged for decades, like this church. Even the oldest hotel in the country is found in this busy district. The piazza is however best known for two eye-catching commodities. Piazza is more like a silver city and a gold city, and you can't come by without procuring yourself some. Pure gold. The most, the most, the most gold is you get in Ethiopia. I couldn't resist the temptation. I tried out several different types, but finally got myself some handmade Ethiopian silver, as well as the imported type. They buy them mostly from Italy, Bangkok and Dubai. The local silver is the purest, but unfortunately less is made due to lack of sophisticated machines. The jewels are not that fairly priced. A gram goes for 60 beers, Ethiopian currency, about 4 US dollars, roughly 10,000 Uganda shillings. It is hard to get one gram, especially with a heavy Ethiopian handmade jewelry. Most begin from 9 grams. Mm, divided by 80, 70 dollars. So many people, most of the time, they come in for shopping. And you can see, you know, all the, all the shop right there, over here, over there. He is right. You cannot move without passing a silver or gold shoe. Others like clothes and coffee shops are scattered amongst the numerous jewelry outlets. The customers keep buying. This season, however, is not as bustling as the rest. November, December and mid-January are months for fasting, so not much festivities occur in order to draw in the customers. The most loved season for these sellers is in the months of May, June, July, August and part of September. There are many weddings and graduations, and business is brisk. However, there is also the random custom of all seasons, like Kebi Alimayel. Just walking, having nice clothes on, and having some chicks, you know, checking out some nice girls. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Silver, however, seems to be the most embraced. The trend was gold. Yeah? Yeah. But nowadays it's a silver. So many people were are looking for silver, so the, the, there is a demand. Whatever the case, the name's stuck. It is a silver and gold city. But when the day turns into the night, this is when the piazza really comes to life. Yidnas is ready for his night job. He is a DJ. You know, go make the people go crazy. Who comes here to have fun? That's, that's what I do. Yeah, come. Why don't you come? Come join. Much as KB's and Yidnas temptation into following them is irresistible. I call it a night. The silver is still shining in my mind as I head back to my hotel after a thoroughly enjoyable day spent in Ethiopia's hidden treasure. Florence Nalimba, NTV Piazza, Ethiopia.